did for a while. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's wonderful to be in the house of the Lord. There's singing, there's shouting, there's victory. Hallelujah. Amen. I would rather be a doormat in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Ah, these are times where you think like, I, I can't miss any service. <laughs> Wonderful. Amen. So, want to welcome you all in the house of the living God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, uh, as far as I see, uh, it's all household furniture. Amen. We are all at home. Okay, want to appreciate uh, Brother Moyo and his wife uh, for visiting us yet once more. A lovely family and uh, with a lovely gentleman. You saw him, he was coming to take his seat uh, as a guest minister. <laughs> Amen. His name is uh, uh, Benaya. Do I pronounce it correctly? Huh? Huh? I, uh, that's right. So, if you read your Bible, uh, that's one of the gentle warriors uh, that was standing by the side of David. Amen. Mighty man of valor. He's a lovely young fellow. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, before we go to the ministration of the word. Brother Mbutini uh, is uh, caught up at work and uh, he asked that we should pray for him and um, this morning we had to pass by the Nchangazes a uh, little ehud was not feeling well, uh, just a fever so uh, we just passed by them to pray for them. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord and um, we have a wonderful testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This one is so striking to my heart. Amen. Uh, because I kind of knew that God was going to do something like that. I just overheard it and uh, I almost wanted to share it, but I said, no, uh, sometimes you've got to just give it time. And uh, sometimes a testimony when it's given by the person who has experienced it, it, uh, it carries more weight. Amen. Because sometimes people think that we as preachers, we always want to claim God has done this, God has done this. But sometimes when the people themselves uh, give the testimony, then you know it's not a put on, it's not a make up. Amen. Before we go to the testimony, God bless you, Brother Norman and your wife. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. And uh, little Shekinah. She, she, must, she must join the Sunday school choir. <laughs> and uh, really, I want to appreciate the wonderful singing um, uh, from the items. Uh, my girls sing very well, ne? Mm, mm, mm. In the Sunday school choir. That song is wonderful. Amen. And uh, Sister Lerato as usual. Amen. And then we are sitting on gifts. Huh? How many of us enjoyed Sister Mure singing there? So next week it's going to be Sister Bridget, uh, then the other week followed by Sister Nkuna, and lastly Sister Jay. <laughs> And before we preach, Sister, Sister Lindy Mbutini. <laughs> wonderful. Amen. So that's uh, wonderful. Before we go to the word of the Lord, um, I believe that uh, uh, Sister Mure uh, has got a testimony uh, to share with us. Amen. I just overheard the testimony. Uh, it was powerful. But uh, I even wanted to call, then I restricted myself. Uh, but uh, it is within Sister More's heart uh, to share the testimony. Amen. You can come through, Sister. Uh, can we have the other microphone there? 
Do you want to share it in English or in Shona? Uh, Brother Murray is a good interpreter. Okay. I, I, I was missing home and I was in Botswana and they sent me a video where Reverend Taku was preaching and then uh, his dad, he was telling his dad, come stand here, interpret for me. <laughs> so sister, do you want to share it uh, in Venek or in English? You just try. So brother Murray, do you want to be close by? Amen. He's very smart. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Just, just take a step. Shona sometimes can hold Jera Kungi Chungota or Snomboti. If you are used to speaking in Shona, in English. In English. Okay. All right. Mm. Yeah, I want to thank God because we were going through uh, that wound of Wazanai. So we went for the operation, the first operation then it was successful because they say it's infection it was called with it was happened because of the sugar it was very high <coughs> so we did the first operation so we were on the 16th last month I went to the hospital because all, on that time they were they did the operation in, in Johannesburg Hospital. Then they transferred us back to Coronation Hospital. So they they did what their part, they were cleaning the wound like two days, two days, two days, two days. Until they say no, next time you are not coming back here. You are going back where they did the operation. It was on nine May. So I went back to Cor to Johannesburg Hospital. Then they started to clean that wound. They were doing it like a week now in Johannesburg Hospital. So the time they were cleaning the wound, they say I must come back on 16. I went back on 16. So that day they cleaned that wound. Then they say, you know what? We need to do the second operation because we need to clean the wound, to close the wound. It's big, it's not gonna close by itself. It's gonna take more than four months. Then I just say, oh, it's well. Then they say, that same doctor, you just say, okay, I want the, the nurse to teach you how to clean that wound. And you are going to clean it by yourself. But if you can't, then it means you need to come back to the hospital. Then I say, it's better I would do it myself. Because the time I was in coronation, they were teaching me how to clean that wound. So I say, no, I'm not gonna come. Because the moment I came here, I need to pay 428 every visit that I go. So I'm not gonna come. They give me everything to clean that wound. I was already put in my bag. Then they say, now we are waiting for the date for the second operation. We were just sitting, we were waiting. Then I see the doctor came again. He said, no, you are not going to clean that wound. We are coming back by the hospital. These two, three weeks that remain. Because now we are scared it's going to get infection. So you need to be at the hospital every time. Then I say, you know what, doctor? I heard you, but... I'm not coming back Hallelujah. to the hospital. Hallelujah. You know, that doctor, he ended up getting angry. I don't know why. Because the time we were talking, there is a nurse who came. I don't know what they talk. That's when she's just saying, no, you are not going to clean that wound. You must come every until that day. 
you must be here. Then I said, doctor, to be honest enough, I don't have that for something, for something every that three weeks. I'm going to find the, uh, the money that I'm coming for that day of operation. I'm not coming back here. Then you know what? She just said, if this child gets the infection, also the sugar it goes high, then we will see. Then I just say, yes, we will see. Because me, I trust in God. So we will just see. We take our things because it was like a fight now because we just come out of the, the, the way they were dressing. We sit where everyone was sitting. So everyone was saying, yes, we're tired of coming back here because we are every time when you come because the, that sister, she just said, if you know that next week you don't have money, better don't come because no help. You need to open the file first. So if you didn't open the file, the doctors won't do nothing because you don't have file. So I just say, all is well. We went back home. I wait for the days that they were giving us. So before the time I was going for visiting, the other doctor gave me the extra that they say, once that thing fell out, don't put it back. It's going to put the infection. So put a new one. I was here with it. So they give me for like three, three times cleaning. So with that one, it means now it's four times cleaning. Instead of seven days, I was just calculating it. Uh, then I open after some others, five days, others, yes, six days. Then the day I was saying, we are going maybe next week, it's going to be six. Then I say, I'm going to clean that wound on Saturday or Sunday, I will see what I can do. So that the time I will go back there, it's going to be clean. So before I do that, on those days, I just phone the doctor who used to check his sugar, everything in coordination. Then I just tell her, that's how it goes. They, we were like fighting. They say, I must come. Then she said, no, I agree with you. To pay every visit, here you will be coming after two days. There is a week, the money is too much. Don't go. But when you open it, send me the photos. So I was just doing like that. Then I used to just say, well, let's pray. Then we clean the wound, we close it. We leave it like that. It was the first week of cleaning of myself. The second time, I just open it, was well, say, wow. This is, it's like smaller than before. <laughs> so I want to give the pastor how it was first and the last one. The first time it was like this. It was like this. So the second time, the time I started to clean it, it was like this. Good. This is the time I started to clean mm. it. Mm. It was still big. Mm. Mm. It was big. Until it started to be small. Mm. Mm. Wow, it's healing. It's closing up. So here, is the Sunday I clean last week mm. before we came to church. Mm. So I was telling Sister Chereka, ah, that wound is getting smaller. Mm. So the time we went on, uh, before I went Tuesday, mm. before I went Tuesday to the hospital, I knocked Tuesday, it's my date six. Mm. Monday I was at work, they just phoned me, are you uh, Rebecca's mother? Then I say, yes, I'm Rebecca's mother. Then they just say, we want to confirm. You still remember we have the second operation tomorrow. Then I say, yes, I know. Then they say, may you please come before 6 morning. You need to be at Johannesburg Hospital. Make sure she didn't eat. Try to be early. Then I say, I will do. So I came back. I tell his father, no, uh, they phoned me. They say we must be there early in the morning. She mustn't eat, so I locked the dining so that she won't go eat. 
Yeah. The time we were by the hospital, uh, we just go straight, they were a queue. Then it was my turn. Then they just say, wow, Rebecca is here. They were like clapping hands, good, wow. We were waiting for her because she was on number two. She was supposed to go on the operation. She was number two. Then the time the doctor was talking, I said, doctor, I think before you go any further, let me show you on my phone because it's closed there. But just have a look on my phone. The last time I clean how it look. Then she screw, she screw. Then she said, no, mm -mm, I won't believe this. Rebecca, go to the dressing room. Open your wound. I want to see it myself. So she followed me. I didn't go. She, see, she came back and said, no, 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 no. No operation at all. You know, I just thank God. I just, like, I want to jump. Then I just say, I know, because pastor say we must make our life right. I did it. I need to thank God. God is so good. So the doctor, he came back again. And he say, Mama Rebecca, I need you in the dressing room. Then I went back there. Then they say, you know what? All the doctors, because all the doctors were in one, they were waiting for her to go. So they say, the, doc, the, the operation is cancelled. <laughs> then this, that one I was fighting with her, she was like, she don't want to face me. She didn't even talk to me. She didn't even talk to me. She just went, and then I went to her. I said, doctor, how are you? She said, I'm All good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I heard everything uh -huh. with that doctor. She told me everything. So, mm. wow, we just, uh, I just want to say thank you for cleaning that wound because mm. I thought it's going to get infection. Then I say, no, it's not me. I just also thank God because he's our healer. <laughs> So we thank God. It's very, very small. It's only now because they say once that one, the one they put is out, uh, you just leave it open. But we see it is still having the blood, the dots of blood which is coming. So once somebody is going to start, that's why we just clean it and cover it again. We need to thank God for that. <laughs> Let's put our hands together as we appreciate the Lord. This is a miracle. Hallelujah. You were not seeing the pictures that I was seeing. That wound was frightening. Hallelujah. And uh, you know, God had already confirmed to us that that girl is healed. Hallelujah. And uh, when we heard that she's going for an operation, we refused it. Hallelujah. And we said we have to do what we can do as human beings because God has healed the child, hallelujah. And when things were made right, hallelujah, the healer is life. The wound started recovering. I could see even, a, it's like a hole. And then you see it closing up, closing, closing, closing up, until the very doctors who had set a date for an operation, they say, no, there is no need for an operation. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. We serve a miracle king God. We serve a miracle king God. We serve a wonder. We serve a miracle. We serve a miracle king God. We serve a miracle king God. We serve a miracle. Shut 
shall be so. Let's give a head of praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's put our hands together as we appreciate the Lord. Praise the Lord. We've lost sound, brother. Amen and amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Praise his holy name. It's fine. Let's leave it like that. Let's just continue. Amen. Praise his holy name. You may be seated for a while. Hallelujah. I want to just make a comment on that testimony that we had. Hallelujah. Um, Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the time when um, Wadza was uh, put in hospital. Hallelujah. Um, the, there's an, a brother who just had a dream about uh, little Wadza. Amen. And the situation was not looking good. Amen. And you know, it's uh, not a good thing for a child like that, 10, 11 years, uh, to be suffering from those kind of things. That is death, actually. Amen. You know, we, uh, me and wife, we went to see a, a certain uh, couple, I think in Midrand. Uh, we were referred by one of our pastors overseas. So they lost a child. Under similar circumstances, amen. You know, where you just think, ah, it's just a normal sickness, but it goes deep, and you can even lose someone. So, the brother had a dream, and, uh, you know, it's amazing. It's tying up with some of the things that I want to talk about today. Amen. When you have a dream, and that dream comes to pass, Brother Branham says, that's a vision. You don't have to connect the dots. You don't have to interpret what this triangle means. It's straightforward. The brother didn't know that was was sick and didn't know that uh, she was going for an operation. But uh, he sends me a voice note even before I announced on the group to say that uh, let's pray for her that she's in hospital. And, uh, you know, the dream was conclusive because somewhere along the line, God turned the situation. And the child was healed. So when I heard that things are going that way, you know, when uh, it's a question of uh, sugar, uh, you have wounds that don't heal. You know, that's one of the things. And uh, they keep on cutting, cutting, until they cut off your, your leg or something like that. So uh, when you see that, I want you to be very sure that was the grace of God that came upon the little girl. Hallelujah. So I knew that God had healed the child a long time ago. Hallelujah. And uh, sometimes what keeps sicknesses is atmospheres that are not right. And when you clear up those atmospheres, then you see God coming down like physically and turning the situation around. So we want to thank God for brother and sister Mure and what God has done for their daughter. Let's put our hands together. She shall not die. What? That will not die. Sugar diabetes won't take you. Amen. Our God is a healer. Amen. So we appreciate God so much for that. Amen. So we are already behind schedule, but let's go straight to the word of the Lord. Amen. But we are so glad because testimonies are also a part of preaching. Amen. So some things that we read about, it's good when we uh, hear about them. Amen. So God bless you. Happy to see Brother Pio there. Uh, God bless you. Amen. He has not been feeling well also. Uh, that's why he missed uh, some of the services. But uh, we're going to pray for him uh, that God may give him the best. Not that. I know that God has said I give you the best of health. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just step in into, a, into your inheritance and enjoy what God has already done. Hallelujah. 
So uh, I'm going to have a bit of a marathon here, amen, uh, to uh, talk about the word of the Lord. Let's open our Bibles to First Kings chapter 3, and uh, we're going to read uh, from verse 5. Uh, I may do a bit of some reading, uh, but I don't have much time, so move fast with me, amen. Uh, I'm thinking that I'll teach or preach whichever comes my way. But I want you to get this. Amen. If we uh, open the first King chapter 3, verse uh, 5. Amen. Uh, Gibeon. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. Hallelujah. So, how many of us believe that God can still appear in dreams? Not when you have eaten a lot of beans. And then you dream things that are unscriptural. But the brother who dreamed about words never knew about the situation. I knew about it. But here's a brother from somewhere calling and telling me, this is the dream that I had. And it's so in line. And God has fulfilled it. And this is the nailing testimony. Amen. So God still uses any fuck out. Amen. He can use the preaching of the word. He can use the teaching of the word. He can use dreams. He can use uh, whatever that he wants to. He can even heal you while you are listening to a tap. I believe those taps are so anointed. And if there is something sweet, my brother is listening to tips. Amen. I, I can tell you, uh, I have so many testimonies. God has sent us that voice. Hallelujah. And we must cherish it. Hallelujah. Of course, everything we put it in perspective and in, in balance. Hallelujah. So, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I shall give thee. We were having a prayer and I was asking the people that we were praying with to say, what would you say? What would be your petition if the creator of heavens and earth talk to you and say, ask whatsoever you want. Huh? And before you start asking there, uh, we were also reading a scripture in James to say you have not because you don't ask. You don't receive because you ask amiss. Hallelujah. So sometimes you have a golden opportunity and you don't align your objectives with that one of God. Hallelujah. Why should God give you a house? Hmm? When believers are not going to be welcome in your house. Hmm? Why should God give me a big car and I don't want to carry the brethren? Why should God give me money so that I just, uh, you know, uh, 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 ride on top of everybody? It's me, I've got money, and everyone, you're nothing. No. Amen. We ask to align with God's will. Then when we are aligned with God's will, the other things, God puts them in place. That's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And these are the things that you want so much, which the Gentiles also want, will be added to you. Anyway, let me read so that you can sit. What a golden opportunity. Huh? The CEO of the bank of heaven is asking you, what do you want? Yeah. Hallelujah. And remember, Solomon was dreaming. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. Solomon was dreaming, but it was reality. God was speaking to Solomon, but uh, he, just, uh, uh, he, he just spoke to him in the other dimension. And Solomon said, may God help us. Brother, by your words, you can get a lot from God. By your words, you can send yourself to hell. Hallelujah. By what you are saying in your heart, even right now, you can unlock unlimited blessings. Or you can send yourself to hell. Be careful. Hallelujah. Solomon said, Thou hast shrewd unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, 
and according as he has walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. Thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And you know who's the son? It's him. Now, and now, O Lord, my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of uh, David, my father, and I'm but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant, that's humility. That's humility. If you want to get somewhere with God, see how humble you can be. With God, the way up is down first. You take yourself down and God lifts you up. If you lift up yourself, great will be your fall. Because God does not allow anybody to lift themselves. If you lift up yourself, God will bring you down. Why don't you bring yourself down? So that God can lift you up. Pride is an evil demon. Hallelujah. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen. A great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for a multitude. Amen. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge the people that I may discern between good and bad. No wonder Brother Branham says uh, uh, God gave Solomon a gift of discernment. Amen. And an understanding heart. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Hallelujah. And the speech Solomon's talking pleased the Lord that Solomon has asked this thing. May God bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Brother Andile, the Bible says here, the speech, the, 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 the understanding of Solomon, it pleased God. Hallelujah. Someone say amen. amen. I want to feel like I'm in the house of the living God. The things that Solomon said pleased God. This afternoon, my brother, my sister, let's be in the habit of saying things that please God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because when you please God, he is a God of extras. Amen. Hallelujah. He is a God of extras. Amen. He doesn't just give you a meal. He gives you a starter. <laughs> and he doesn't just give you a starter and the main meal. He gives you also a dessert. Cold or hot, whichever way you want it. My, my, my. God is good. Amen. And the Bible says, God was pleased. My brother, my sister, I don't know what can happen this afternoon if God is pleased with you. I don't know what can happen today when I'm preaching and my preaching can please the Lord. I don't know what will happen when your life will please the Lord. But for us to know, let's see what happened to Solomon. Hallelujah. I've always desired this kind of fellowship with God. Amen. Our God is not an idol. Our God is not uh, uh, made of wood or gold or whatever it is. He has got a mouth he can speak. He has got ears he hears. We don't assume that he has head. But he can confirm that yes, I have heard. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says, and God answered Solomon. Hallelujah. Amen. My brother, my sister, we are serving a God that can answer. Amen. If God says, I have healed Waza, then we want to see the doctors being baffled. Amen. What has happened to the wound? Amen. Amen. Now, if you take note of the scripture, I believe it's James chapter 4. The reason why people fight, the reason why auntie and Malume are not seeing each other, it's because of Chelet. It's because of jealousy. 
Hallelujah. There are reasons I'm very sorry, uh, but uh, uh, let me start from a political level. The reason why we have political killings is jealousy. They want the same position that uh, this one has. Why are you driving a, a bigger car than mine? Hallelujah. I'm so ashamed to tell you that even in the world, people are jealous of one another. Huh? Christians, so-called Christians, being jealous of other Christians. Including ministers. Including pastors. Being jealous. And that's what causes fights. Hmm? Let those people come to me, not there. Huh? I was talking to a pastor friend of mine. He says, I have realized that we don't have permanent members as, Christians, as pastors. God gives us the people that he wants us to pastor. And when you stick with what God gives you, uh, the blessing of the Lord adds no sorrow. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. So, it's jealous. Sometimes it's jealous within people that are born of the same father and mother. They are competing. Hallelujah. It shouldn't be so. And then James say, you don't have because you are asking God so that you can uh, 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 downtrod others. Or you can beat your chest and say, look at me. Hallelujah. Jealousy among neighbors. You see someone uh, extend their, their home and paint their, uh, their steps red. You see the neighbors on both sides, they are all running to build us. <laughs> Hallelujah. But if we could be as wise as Solomon, he had a golden opportunity to talk to the creator of all things. And when he, when he comes before the Lord, you know, uh, gifts and callings are without repentance. You are born with it. Because I don't believe that uh, it was much more after God has given him. But the fact that he's before God and he asked for something that not only benefits him, but that benefits the people of God. And indirectly benefiting God. And then God was happy. Sometimes brothers and sisters are wasting time in selfish prayers. You're only thinking of yourself. Hallelujah. Such things don't please God. Now, let's read here. I don't have much time. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, Lord, let me live 200 years. Neither have thou asked riches for thyself. No, as the life of thy enemies. A Christian does not have enemies or bitterness or grudges. Even if someone has, uh, you know, done you wrong, when you go to prayer, if you are a real Christian, you might go to prayer hurt because so and so has done such a thing. But when you get in the presence of God, you start to feel sorry for that gentleman. And you change your prayer to say, God, help this poor soul. Can I hear an amen? amen. I'm telling you the honest truth. Amen. But thou hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. May God help us with that. Because behold, huh, that's God. Hmm? Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart. Brother Branham says it was one gift. Now we, we, we get to understand that, you know, there are nine spiritual gifts. But Solomon was just given one of those spiritual gifts. Hallelujah. If one produced a kingdom like the one that Solomon had. How about all of it? Amen. Amen. 
that there is none like thee, uh, like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any, any rise like unto thee. So I can, I can tell you, someone born of father and mother, there has never been a person as wise as Solomon, and there will never be a person as wise as Solomon. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we all know the exception outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my. Amen. Amen. Wow. God be blessed. I have also given thee which thou hast not asked. Da kupa shos na kumbira. You know, sometimes when I'm reading it in English, I'm wondering, I'm wondering, is it getting to you? Is it getting to you? I have given you also what you didn't ask for. Hallelujah. Imagine you phone your friend, you want 500 rand, and he says, ah, friend, no, man, me, I can't just give you 500 rand. I want to give you 5,000 rand. Huh? You came with a little request, and then God is saying, no, you, you have asked this good thing, I have given it to you, but I am also a God of extras. Brother, sister, this afternoon, our God is a God of extras. Hallelujah. He has given you what you have not asked for. Amen and amen. Now, what did God give him? Both riches. Hallelujah. Huh? I hear so little amens. These people, they want to be poor. It's a choice. If you want it, you can have it. But God came and made Solomon rich. Hey. Hallelujah. Hey. And he gave him honor. When you see Solomon passing, people take off their heads. They salute. There is a servant of the Lord. There is a king worthy of the honor. My brother, my sister, you will be honored. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel, I feel it so personal. My brother, you will be honored. Your name will carry substance. Pray, my brother, no man. <laughs> you will have substance. Hallelujah. So that they shall not be like any other. Uh, among the kings, like unto thee all the days. Don't worry about them. They are just wanting to connect the generator uh, because load shedding can start any moment from now. Hallelujah. But before load shedding comes, let's, uh, let's just go a little bit further here. Amen. So, God gave him a wise and understanding heart. And he says, I have also given you things you did not ask for. I have given you riches and I have given you honors. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Sunday school, you sang so well. Amen. But somehow I have something against you. I'm using wisdom now. What was Solomon's provision for a day? Hmm? Anybody want to read that? Huh? There was a good prize. You have lost a prize. Yeah. Huh? Solomon's provision for a day. Actually, what I like there is that God blessed Solomon until there was no lack. He lacked nothing. Hallelujah. 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 Am I preaching to real people? 
Now, the problem you have, people, is that you always take scriptures and you leave them there in the Bible. Instead of leaving the scriptures now in the day where you are. Solomon was blessed in such a way that there was no lack. And I'm still praying to be at that level of blessing. Where there is no lack. Hallelujah. I'll just uh, touch this and I go to my subject. I'm racing against time. But Solomon's provision for a day, he was not eating the whole food alone. But he was inviting all the noble people, all the important people for dinner every day. If we come to your home for dinner, first day, second day, third day, you say, eh. <laughs> Hallelujah. But Solomon was having guests that were coming to join him for dinner every day. Now, this is the scripture that the Sunday school didn't read. And I have a mark against you, Sunday school. When you are given a homework, do your homework. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, every day, I'm not talking about a budget for a month. I'm talking about a budget for a day. Every day, there was 30 measures of uh, flour. Amen. And when I tried to look, nobody exactly know what a measure in the Bible represented. But you are, you are looking at close to 30 kgs. Amen. And also, 30 kgs of pap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you still with me? 10 fetid cows. We are not talking about a budget for a month, a day. You know what ten fetid calves are? They take the cows from the grazing land there. Then they give them special uh, uh, grazing uh, food, uh, feed to make them fat. And they are not going out there with others. And every day, ten are being slaughtered. On top of the ten... Fated oxen for one day. Hallelujah. Then they take 20 from the field to add them. Talk about the yam. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And not only that, they also had a hundred sheep to slaughter a day. Huh? Not what we do when we go to Dua. <laughs> gusha, gusha, then you have 50 people, they are looking at one gusha. A hundred sheep a day. And many deers, uh, that's now game meat. So you walk with your, with your plate do I want beef? Or I want a deer. I want game meat. And the chickens, they said, without any number, they were talking about fowls. They, they didn't cover that. And you think you have done well by slaughtering one. And it was happening every day. Brother, if I lived in the days of Solomon, I was going to make sure that I am a daily guest to the King Solomon. <laughs> Hallelujah. What am I saying? Brother Branham says, when God gives a gift to the people. Are you listening? When God gives a gift to the people. And he says... Every time in the Bible, you find that God always gifts a person to lead the people. Only gifted people lead the children of God. This, but when God gives that gift, the people have to recognize it. 
and they have got to believe it. If they recognize and believe it, then it becomes a golden age for the people. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise be the name of the Lord. Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. When God gave, gave Solomon a gift, Israel recognized it. They embraced it. They supported it. They prayed for it. They rallied behind it. And uh, everybody was prosperous. People were living under their own fig tree. They had their own homes. And there was no war. War is absence of will wisdom. You don't have to fight, my brother. You don't have to fight. If you are wise, like Solomon. Uh, Solomon realized he needed to build the house of God. He didn't have the materials. Now listen. Listen very carefully. Listen very carefully, children of God. You know, sometimes I feel like I can take the joy that is in my heart and force it on you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Solomon needed to build the house of God. That's what we hear, isn't it? But if you go and read uh, the Bible carefully, it was also time for him to build his own house. But he was so humble that what he put up, uh, 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 on, to, uh, on the front was the house of God. And he was always following. That's why when he went to ask God, he asked something that would benefit the people, not him. And it doesn't mean that God will forsake you. No, as you are pushing the kingdom of God, God also takes care of you. He needed material. That temple was foreordained of God to be built. I'm going to choke you. But we are in a Bible study, isn't it? The materials that were needed to build the temple were spread all over the world. Some was in Africa, some in Europe, America, whatever it is. And Solomon had to have the wisdom to get that material, to know what is needed in Africa. What do I need in Africa? Are we together? In Asia, what is it that I need? And the material was not made by the same person. So the ones in Africa, they were sending the material just like that. The, the, the one from Asia, whatever it is, all the other kingdoms, they were sending material finished and ready. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of the Lord. And when the material came to Solomon, am I preaching to someone today? When the material came to Solomon, and they, they, they were finding that what came from Africa is matching exactly with what came from Europe and what came from Asia. And the builders were simply connecting the dots. Are you ready for this? There was not even a sound of a hammer or something that had to be resized. Everything came from everywhere and it was making the temple of God. A type of the bride of Jesus Christ. There is a material that God is taking from the Zululand, from the, from the Shanghalis, from, from, from the Sutus, from the Petis, from the Shonas, from the Debeles, from the Chinese, from the Americans. And all of it is coming to build a habitation for God. And no hammer was ever had there. There are people who, who have done building here. Just to build a little thing. This one of Solomon. By wisdom, my brother. Materials were just coming. And the Bible says, yes, yes, yes. Amen to you. <laughs> I heard that uh, loud amen. Hallelujah. The materials, my brother. It was just connecting them. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Wonderful. No hammer was ever had in that house. 
until it was built. And uh, for you to see that it was not a man's wisdom. It was now God coming down from heaven. God walking in the streets of uh, Israel, in the streets of Jerusalem, in the form of Solomon. As the people received Solomon, they received God. That's why uh, we are talking about the golden age for the bride. Amen. When you receive the message of the, of the messenger, you are receiving God. That's why Brother Branham was told by the angel, get the people to believe you. Hallelujah. Get the people to believe you and nothing shall stand before you. Hallelujah. Believe the prophets and you shall prosper. Believe the Lord God, so shall you be established. Hallelujah. And can I take you lower a little bit? Believe even the man that's preaching the gospel to you. If I'm not the right kind of a pastor, if I can know where the right pa uh, pastor for you, I will take you there. Because you will never benefit if you don't believe the man who's preaching for you. Hallelujah. But you can have so much confidence if you get the people to believe you. Huh? John 14 verse 1. Believe in the Lord. And believe also in me. Because nothing, as you believe the servant of God, you are believing God that sent the servant. That's why the Bible says there were certain places where people, when they saw Jesus, they were doubting. We heard he doesn't have a father. We heard about Mary. We are suspecting that he was dating that other guy. There's no such a thing of saying a virgin birth. No, 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 no. We don't believe it. The Bible says he could not do many works in that place because of their unbelief. Hallelujah. My brother, you have a responsibility to believe. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. I want to come back to the example of uh, the Mure family. I told them that God has healed your child. And when I was telling them that God has healed their child, the wound was too big. Hallelujah. I said God cannot lie. God is not a man. God is not an Indian giver. He cannot say one thing and then uh, uh, do another thing. Amen. Sometimes all we need to do is to get realigned. Amen. There is a promise of divine healing. There is a promise of miracles among the bride. There is a promise of exploits that shall be done. Hallelujah. If we are all aligned, then you see God doing things. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, when people receive the gift, then God blesses them. He says, they enter into a golden age. Brother, I wish I could live in the reign of Solomon. Every man had enough. There was no hunger. There was no war. There was no lack, my brother. Everything was in abundance. There were about like 12 provinces. And each governor of each province was given a month to say, this month you are supplying the king with these things every day. <laughs> my brother, my sister, the house of Jacob, one day they received a gifted young boy in the family. There were 11 sons and uh, 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 there were 12 sons. Then the other one was gifted. He claimed to, to hear some voices and to see some things. His life was just, uh, you know, and the brothers hated him. If you want to see people hating you, believe the supernatural. You see, they will be turned against you. They say this boy, he thinks he's greater. He thinks that God has lifted him higher because the visions were saying so. Until he tells his own father, that I even saw the sun and the moon all bowing before me. <laughs> and the 
brothers, they say, Daddy, 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 we told you. We told you, this young boy, as in Funi Lab. We are so good in Salomon. They hated the gift. But they were supposed to rally. They were supposed to, to support him. And what did they do? They almost crucified him. For almost the similar amount of silver that the Lord was sold for. And what did, they, what did they do? They rejected the gift of Joseph. And the gift of Joseph was sent to Africa. God bless you, Africa. The gift was sent to Africa. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. And landed in some denomination of uh, Potiphar. And a woman represents a church. And uh, there was a lady there who said, no, 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 man. This thing of saying, God, God, what, what, what? Come, let's have a relationship. Hallelujah. Joseph says, no, I fear God. He says, oh, you fear God? I'll put you in trouble for your faithfulness with God. He is a gifted man because the Bible says, as he entered into the house of Potiphar, everything that Potiphar had started to blossom. Where do you get this idea that a Christian life is supposed to be difficult and uh, being difficult is, a, is an expression of spirituality? We read different Bibles, my brother. When Joseph entered into the house of Potiphar, my Bible says everything that was in the house of Potiphar, it blossomed until you were scammed to go to jail. My brother, my sister, I don't care where they put you. I don't care where they take you to. Even there in jail, Joseph with the gift of God, the jail began to prosper, hallelujah, until the, the chief warden of the jail said, I am not worthy, Joseph, although you are also a prisoner, I appoint you to be upon other prisoners. What happened to Israel? They had rejected the gift. Hallelujah. Don't worry. When you reject the gift of God, trouble is going to catch up with you very soon. It might not happen immediately, but you will remember. You will remember that, yeah, 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 yeah. There we missed it. When he was in prison there, hallelujah, I like this statement. It anchors in my heart. Amen. When the gift of God gets you into trouble, don't you worry. The same gift will take you out of the problems. He is in prison because of a gift. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is there because of a, uh, of a gift there. And the same gift, when people started having different dreams, amen, he says, I can interpret, uh, I can interpret tongues, man. Hmm? <laughs> Bring, bring it here. And he interpret, he interpret, he interpret. And then that was in jail. And his reputation followed him to the palace. When Pharaoh was in problems, then somebody remembered that there's a man there in prison who can resolve this. And when they brought him, that was his amnesty. That was his bye-bye to the prison. And where did the gift take him? Right! On the throne, literally. Until Pharaoh said, uh, when David was, uh, Joseph was interpreting the dreams. Hallelujah. And he says, you, uh, uh, my, my Lord uh, uh, Pharaoh, you need to look for a man who is wise. Who has got character. And brother, I see the, the governors in Egypt, they were looking at Pharaoh and winking and saying, yeah, yeah, you know, Pharaoh. Uh, you think the description that this young man is talking, don't, don't you think it fits me? And Pharaoh scratched his head and he says, yeah, I need a wise man to be in charge of this operation. But you governors, you are nowhere close to it. This man here. And everyone was like, ah! A prisoner. He says, yeah, I sign his pardon. I change his clothes. I change his address. And he has been a single brother for too long. 
I even give him a wife. <laughs> ah. Hallelujah. But look at Israel. What did they do? They rejected the gift. And what happened? There was a famine there. Hallelujah. And to fulfill what God had said it, by the mouth of Joseph when he was a young boy. Sometimes you think that uh, uh, this prophecy is not correct because where is it? Joseph was given a message when he was young. But he was never told about being sold to Egypt. He was never told about getting into prison. He was never told about getting there to, uh, to close to Pharaoh. But many years later, his brothers followed. Amen. So sometimes you prejudge and say, this thing has not happened. This, no. God is in control of things. Amen. I will fulfill everything that I have said. Amen. That's coming from the mouth of the Lord. I'm not afraid. I speak in the name of the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. There is Joseph. And uh, there, there is a famine now. Hallelujah. There is a famine. And what happens? The very brothers who said, we will never bow before you. We will never honor you. You are a small boy. They came and when they were hungry, they were not even asked to bow. When they heard that the, the governor of Egypt is coming, they just went on their knees automatically to fulfill that says the Lord. My brother, my sister, let me say under inspiration, hallelujah, things will bow before you. You will, they will bow before you. Amen and amen. And it was not enough because the other dream was that even the son himself would. Huh? And the son represented the father. Hey. And he took the young boy and he, he kidnapped the young boy. He says, you are staying here. Let the old man come. Yes. And when the old man came, he bowed himself to. Hey. Hallelujah. I want you to take this as a keynote. Hallelujah. Amen. Solomon, in his golden reign, he lacked nothing. There was not even a single lack. And the standard was high, Sister Beulah. The standard was high. I'm exercising restraint. The standard was high. Breakfast, there's carbohydrates, there's proteins, there's fats, there's what, 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 what? Supper, there's beef. Chicken. Whatever, whatever, whatever. You choose. That, ah, this past days, man. I've been too much on this beef. Mm -mm. Let me change. And the cheese and the greens. We don't eat the greens because we are broke, but we eat the greens because they are healthy. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Now, the children of Israel, God gave them something greater than Solomon. You remember Jesus when he was preaching to the Pharisees? He looked at them and he says, you are looking for a sign. Huh? But how, how blind are you? How many things have I been doing? God sent Israel not just one gift. He, God sent Israel himself. When Jesus was there, I want someone to be listening to me. And I'm cranking you to believe my brother, my sister. When Jesus was walking on the streets of Galilee, there was no lack even of wine. That's a scripture that many drunkards like. There was not even a lack of wine. 
when they were at a, at a wedding and the wine was out, Mary knew that this one, why did Mary know? He, Mary knew at home when things were bad, they would rely on him. <laughs> So Mary was saying, no, this issue of wine, don't you worry. He is here. Just talk to him. And when he comes there, hallelujah, he makes wine out of water. Hallelujah. He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. And the disciples saw that. One day he was having a convention. Hallelujah. And there were 5,000 men. Amadod. With Mkab. And according to the Jewish uh, 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 religion, they count men. And they say, with women. So it's 5,000 men. And uh, women on top. And children. And there was no food. But they received the gift of God. They received the gift of God. Bring the little that you have. Bring the little that you have. Offer it to Jehovah. And Jehovah will multiply. If you don't hear God talking to you, I don't know. Don't, it's not an excuse. Yeah, what I'm getting is little. Bring the little one. And let him hold it. Look up to heaven. And he blessed it. And he started breaking it. It never got finished. It never got finished. It never got finished. It never got finished. It will never be finished. Because the son of prosperity. We are not talking about what denominations have made out of the gospel of prosperity. I'm talking about the real Bible prosperity. There was no lack. Everybody ate the fish. Everybody ate the bread. Even when he was resurrected, you, uh, you who say I'm spiritual, even when he was resurrected, the disciples could not catch fish. Before that, he had seen them struggling to catch fish. But when he was there, and they accepted the gift, and they said, at thy word, at thy word, at thy word. There was a great catch, my brother. It was not just two. It was not just a basket. The Bible says the nets almost break. My God, as you hear me preaching these things, may they be so in my life and the lives of those that believe. Those that believe it, they eat of it. Hallelujah. But brother and sister, there came a time when Israel rejected the gift that was in the Lord Jesus Christ. In him was the prophet. The spirit of prophets was in. In him was a pastor. In him was an apostle. In him was a teacher. All these gifts that we talk about today, they were in Christ Jesus. In him was prophecy. Some people want to cut prophecy out of the Bible. You can't do that. One day he told them that, hey, you people, huh? when you see the army surround Jerusalem, run for cover. Pray that that doesn't happen in winter. What was that? It was a spirit of prophecy. Hallelujah. And what did the Jews do? They rejected the Messiah. And Brother Branham says, when you reject the Messiah, chaos comes in. Hallelujah. When they killed the Messiah, 30 years after that, Titus came in. Hallelujah. And the Pharisees and the high priest and whatever, they said, ah, we see these are Philistines. Uh, we will defeat them. But the Christians... Those that were listening to the, the, to the teachings of Jesus Christ, they remembered this is a prophecy being fulfilled. So Titus came in 
He gathered uh, around the city and then he withdrew. When he withdrew, the believers, everybody who had the Holy Ghost, they fled because they knew Jesus spoke about this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be his holy name. Hallelujah. And when Titus came, the priests, they said, let's go to the house of the Lord. Let's go and camp there. They didn't know that God has left the, the temple. They didn't know that they'd rejected their Messiah. Huh? Titus came and he surrounded them, my brother. And uh, there was a great drought and starvation in Israel. Hallelujah. They, uh, they didn't have food until they were eating bugs of the trees. When it comes for umdoko, they are getting their umdoko from doves. Hallelujah. And eventually when, uh, when uh, Titus realized that now they are powerless, he broke through and he went. They were killed right in the temple. Amen. And that started the exile of Israel. Amen. What was it? They rejected the gift. They rejected the Messiah. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Praise his holy name. Amen. <laughs> in the message, in the message uh, 470412, Brother Branham says, when Christ left the scene, people wanted healing. But what did he do? He gave Peter the gift of healing. Hallelujah. And the believers, they rallied when they saw that Peter <laughs> is taken after the Lord. Hallelujah. At first they would come to be laid hands until they realized that no, 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 no. Brothers and sisters, we must realize that God has gifted this man here. People were no longer coming for a prayer line, my brother. They were saying, where is he going to be praying? Where is the service today? Bring the sick people. And as Peter is passing by, his shadow is going to heal the sick. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hey, 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 my brother. Today the Holy Ghost is here. You accept the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You enter into a golden age. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When Solomon received the gift of the Lord, all other things were taken care of. He built the house of the Lord. He built his own house. Everybody in Israel had their own house. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Something painful is coming. Even the birds of the field, they don't rent. Every bird has got its own nest. And I tell you, brother, sister, I'm also renting, so don't think I'm hitting on you. I also don't have a house. But whether the word is beating me or it's beating you, go fan. Sizoshumael. Birds don't hire, birds don't rent. From the bigger bed and they rent a, a, a nest. Each bed has got its own nest. Yeah. Who's more special, a bed and a child of God? Yeah. Let me preach. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen and amen. There's this one, this one. I want it before things happen here. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of the Lord. 610730. Amen. Amen. Praise be the name of the Lord. And we want paragraph 69. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. amen. Glory to God. Amen. amen. He says, when they accepted the gift, hallelujah. He says, they prospered. They entered into a golden age. See now, the court is refusing to come out. Amen. But all is well. Let me check again. Uh, 61, 0730, paragraph 69. 
All right, let me just uh, say here. He says, uh, Christ, the, uh, Solomon was typing Christ. Hallelujah. So, when the Israel uh, people received Solomon, they prospered. And he says, you bride of Jesus Christ, receive Christ into your heart and you will be blessed. <laughs> Get him into your heart. I wanted to read that one for you. Amen. Get him into your heart and you will be blessed. Hallelujah. If you receive what God has given. Today we are the Christians that we are because we embraced the ministry of Brother Branham. Hallelujah. The ministry of Brother Branham did not come in words only. He had a face-to-face -face encounter with God. A supernatural being came down from heaven and was having a conversation with William Branham. And say, you, you have been given a gift to take to the rest of the peoples of the world. And what did the angel say? He says, get the people to believe you. Hallelujah. As you believe that, you will prosper. As you believe that, you will be a bride of Jesus Christ. As you believe that, you will be sealed by the Holy Ghost. As you believe that, you get a ticket for the rapture. You will be saved from the chaos that is coming on the world. I had almost forgotten to make a comment. God is testing his systems if everything is working. An earthquake over there. Huh? We woke up, we looked at one another. Wife, what's happening? Huh? Is there a thief in the house? No, God is testing his system. Earthquakes are still working. Hallelujah. Every time you read the news and you hear them talking about Putin, the president of Russia, it's God testing his systems. They know very well that man has got weapons of mass destruction. Not the ones that they were talking about Saddam there. This one has got it. And he's threatening to use them. And when you search in your message, he tells you, watch Russia. Watch Russia. And he's beginning to tell them now, I can do it. Where are we children of God? My brother, before any bomb can explode, there has to be a revival among the bride. There has to be a demonstration of power. God must showcase himself again that he is a healer of incurable diseases. He raises the lamp. He opens the eyes of the blind. He does the supernatural. And when God is done with that, he takes his bride away. Get ready for the rapture, my brother, my sister. The rapture is upon us. The change of the body. But before it happens, there must be a demonstration of power. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not just words, 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 words. Don't confuse words, words for the word of God. Because the word of God did not come in letter form only. It comes in the power of demonstration. What is the word? It's not just paper. Hallelujah. It's reality. What is the word of God? If the word of God can change a sinner like me into a gentleman. The word of God puts a suit on you, brother. The word of God puts a tie on you, brother. The word of God makes you a proper lady. The word of God is power. The word of God can come and heal. They say a wound of diabetes can never heal. But the word of God comes and says, no. This one I will heal. We serve a miracle working God, Cooper. Hallelujah. We serve a miracle working God. Hallelujah. There shall be another performance. Hallelujah. There shall be, hallelujah, another great outpouring. Hallelujah. 
the word that is in us, hallelujah, has to be tested, hallelujah. We are going to come face to face with the devil, hallelujah. Amen and amen. When you receive this, hallelujah, you enter into a golden age. Hallelujah. Brother, sister, don't you worry. In the times of uh, Solomon, there was no wars. You say, ah, but here in South Africa, there's no more, there's no war. Brother, the way you are so broke, that's a war, my brother. The way you are so sick, that's war. The way you are so unhappy, that's war. We need Jesus Christ to bring joy, to bring peace. When you sleep, my brother, you must sleep soundly. Not holding your, your, your cheek like this. Eh? You become so angry to the children. They are just having tea and they put three teaspoons of sugar. Hey, when? Because you know if they put three teaspoons of sugar, next week the sugar will be finished. I want to live in the age where they lacked nothing. It's possible, my brother. You can lack nothing. That's why God sent Jesus, sent his disciples, and he sent them out there. And after some time, he says, did I give you uh, 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 some e-wallet? Did I give you some transfer? Did I give you some cash? He says, no. He says, but did you lack anything? Can I tell you the truth? He did provide, but he provided through the members of the board. He would go to that one, bless that one, and say to him, go and give those words. He blessed that one. He blessed. It was him doing it. Because when you are in Christ, it's a bold statement. You lack nothing. You lack nothing. When Moses, that gifted servant of God, when he was taking the children of Israel, passing through where there is no McDonald's, passing through where there is no job of water, did they lack anything? I tell you, our Lord is coming. He's coming to take us into the millennium. Where there will be no more war. Hallelujah. Where there will be no more war. Hallelujah. You know what's going to happen in the millennium? They take all the bombs and the, all, all the guns and they make plows out of them. Imagine where you, you, you need no security. There's no thief. No one will sleep hungry. Jesus will be the king. It's a golden age. And as it was in the days of Solomon, such is coming for our millennium. But brother, before the great millennium can come, while you are in this allowed the here, while you are in this world here, you can have your own golden age. You don't have to wait for the millennium there. You can be in your own millennium right now. God bless you. Brother Pio, if you can come to pray for us. Hallelujah. We serve a miracle working God. We serve a miracle working God. We serve a miracle. We serve a miracle. Do you have a need this afternoon? Are you saying, God, help me? Hallelujah. Are you saying, God, I want to embrace whatever you are doing. I want to receive the person of God. I'm not just looking for a little gift there, a little gift there. I want all of you. Are you believing, my brother, my sister? He's here this afternoon. He's more than willing. Align your needs to the needs of God. Then it pleases him to do something for you. I want to live in a place where there are no wars. Where there's no strife but just the excellence of the Holy Ghost 
Is it possible in the times of Solomon there was not even a single war? He knew how to handle things in wisdom. When the Holy Ghost is leading you, my brother, you can live a peaceful life. Power upon power. When a war of sickness comes, God will deal with it. There's so much faith in the house of the Lord. Just believe my brother, my sister. As our brother will be praying for us. Just believe. Amen. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible.